Last week, the civil war of Karnak was ended. The snake people of Karnak expelled the evil Marquette's former high priest of the snake people of Karnak for his role in instigating the civil war. But unknown to the snake people of Karnak, Marquette has formed an alliance with Sharon, Queen of the Turf Empire. Meanwhile, Lord Fitzroy has fallen into a deadly trap and is being stalked by man-eating tiger bears. Can our hero, Lillian Gibraltar, heroine of the 13th dimension, save Lord Fitzroy yet again for the 70-somethingth time? And also, Foil the plans of Marquette, the former High Priest of Karnak, and Sharon, Queen of the Turf Empire. Find out in this episode of Lillian Gibraltar, heroine of the 13th Dimension. I fumbled one hand in the darkness, the other hand clutching the camera. The mine shaft was choked with wreckage. Fragments of joists and beams scattered on the ground, like a shattered rib cage. I picked my way through the debris as carefully as the darkness would allow. The air was thick with a smell I cannot describe, not the scent of death or decay. The miners who had died had been found and removed quickly. It were like the smell of the tomb. The smell of death so old it could scarcely be called death any longer. When there's nothing left to rot. A hiss. An incessant, unceasing hiss. Deeper in the darkness. More gas escaping from the rocks. I should have turned back. Again, I should have turned back. I pushed deeper into the darkness. Searching for the source of the hiss. As I stumbled deeper into the dark, the smell got stronger, almost overpowering. A rush and a stop. I found myself at the bottom of a huge pit. Bigger by far than the mine shaft, the walls were hard rock, not tight-packed earth. The smell here was more than I could bear, not unpleasant, but all-consuming. Hiss, closer than before. Hiss, moving now, hiss, circling, hiss, a rush in the darkness, a feeling of displaced air, hiss. I awoke some time later, perhaps seconds, perhaps hours. I felt something moving on my chest, I could hear the hiss of its breath. A line of fire across my skin, the creature cut carefully like a surgeon. I were paralysed. Helpless. Unable to struggle, let alone fight. I could only lay there in grim anticipation as I felt something wriggle between the flaps of bloodied skin on my abdomen. Hours later I could move again. I could still hear the creature's hissing breath at the other end of the pit. Anxious fingers felt only a line of rough skin across my stomach where once it had been could open.
Good evening. You are listening to the Switchboard, connecting all points in humanity's ongoing voyage into the unknown. I am the host, and it is 17 years since the beginning of the end. March 30th, 2005. The strange ship is beside us now, barely two meters away. We tried going aboard. We searched everywhere, but we found no one. We tried to find fuel, but there was nothing. There were no supplies of any kind. The strange ship was unbearably hot, like standing too close to a blazing fire. The ship is very old and has huge guns on both ends. It makes us nervous to look at it. April 1st, 2005. Our food is gone. One day it was fine, the next it was swarming with maggots. The same thing has happened to our catch. All rotten and filled with maggots. We have no food except the maggots themselves. And they're becoming flies so very quickly. We searched the other ship again to make sure. Still no sign of any people, food, or fuel. April 3rd, 2005. We don't know what's happening. Our ship is radiating scorching heat like the strange vessel floating next to it. I can hardly stand to touch the walls. The intense heat and the hunger is making sleep impossible. We attempted to use the other ship's radio, which was ancient and brand new at the same time. Obviously a very old design, but it seemed to have never been used. We got the same screeching, high-pitched wail we'd been hearing from our own radio. We couldn't get the engine to start either. It must be out of fuel as well. April 10th, 2005. The heat has become so intense we've had to cover every inch of floor we could with cloth to prevent the soles of our boots melting on the hot steel. We used bedsheets, tarps, towels, clothes, anything we could find. The ship stinks of rot and sweat and desperation. April 13th, 2005. Two crewmen jump ship in the night. They might have the right idea. April 20th, 2005. Starvation has claimed its first victim. Nobody wants to do it, but we all know what we have to do. April 21st, 2005. None of us have names anymore. After yesterday, it's easier this way. No people, just walking meat. We didn't even have to light a fire. We just left the body on the bare steel floor, and the meat cooked through in a matter of hours. It was horrible. April 28th, 2005. We have run out of food again. April 30th, 2005. One of the others has lost patience. He refuses to wait for another person to die, 
trying to convince the rest of us to draw straws for who to butcher next. We told him no. May 2nd, 2005. He killed one of the others. We were woken by the conflict. He bludgeoned him to death with a hammer. We had no choice. We killed him too, before he could kill any more of us. There are only three of us left. We have enough food for another two weeks at least. Somebody needs to find us. This is where Biao Xiaoping's diary ends. The strange ship that followed them does seem to match the description of the Black Freighter. A very old but pristine naval vessel with large gun embankments fore and aft, and no sign of human habitation. And his account certainly matches Harbour Master Sir Cliff's report of extreme heat aboard the vessel. But what was the source of the extreme heat? And what was the piercing wail heard on the radio on both vessels? Why did Sir Cliff report shifting hallways and bulkheads, but Xiao Ping did not? Could that mean there were two separate but similar phenomena? And is it possible to confirm that the Black Freighter is indeed the SMS Fafnir? If you have more information regarding the Black Freighter, please do not hesitate to share it with us. But until we learn more, we will be closing the book on this ongoing mystery for now. <coughs> oh God! Oh, just once. Oh, hold on. Bloody! Oh.
Son, that was Kim Tillman with Overboard. And if you want to shake yourself awake, why not try one of Brown Eyes Caffeinated Milkshakes? That's Brown Eyes Caffeinated Milkshakes. The best way to shake yourself awake in the morning. Busted. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I apologize. Here's the re- nightly report. <clears throat> K G C L P V G F P Y C E B L V K U U M C W V A N S Y G B N A I Y Y K K J Q W L H H S T E Y T P W H J G W C Y S H W T Y M O L H Q F I D I U O W U Y D A J S C V J L C F K G C L P N Z S Q P F J I F S U Y B Z W S B U V I A C L Have you witnessed a supernatural event? Have you had an encounter with an entity you cannot explain? Do you have vital information for people around the world? If so, I will be happy to relay it. Please send all reports to the host switchboard, all one word, at gmail.com. For now, this is the host, reminding you never go at night, never go alone, and always go armed. The Switchboard is a Hog and Dice production written and directed by Stephen Jack Cullen with music by Thomas O'Boyle and Kevin MacLeod. The voice of the host was Keith Byrne. The voice of Samantha Coe was Alison Marcellus. You can find out more and see our other projects at hoganddice.com. We really are open to your reports, so please send your written reports or audio recordings to the host switchboard at gmail.com or tweet them directly to the host at switchboardpod. This episode's broadcast failure was performed by Stephen Jack Cullen. The song was Overboard by Kim Tillman. You can find out more at thekimtillman.com. If you're in Dublin city centre and are looking for a place to plot your revenge on a world that's turned its back on you, why not drop into the Clockwork Door? They have a games room, a study room, a fully stocked kitchen and a board games and reading room. 
You only have to pay for the time you spend there, and rates start at eight cent a minute for your first two hours. Find out more at clockworkdoor.ie. If you enjoyed today's episode, maybe you'd also like The Cliffs of Insanity.